Hello, everybody. Welcome to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and I'm so happy to be here today. I know it's a uh, Monday, but the Lord spoke to me by the Holy Ghost to preach today. And I'm going to preach today a message. I don't know how long this one's going to be, but the Holy Ghost began to deal with me, and he said, people need to hear about finished faith. I said, say what, Lord? And the Lord said, talk about finished faith. So I'm going to talk to you today about finished faith. Father God, hide me behind the cross. Let it be none of me, but all of you, in Jesus' name, for your glory and for your glory alone, Father God. Father God, right now I speak faith into everybody's life that's listening to this message, Holy Ghost. Lord God, I ask you, Lord, cover me in the blood, put me behind the cross. Father God, right now, Father, speak through these lips of clay. Let it be none of me, but all of you. And Father God, I ask you to let everybody that's listening to this service Sing when they leave here tonight, but never from your presence. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we just pray, and we ask you to make it so in Jesus' name. Amen. Now turn with me first, if you will, and the message will make a lot of more sense. A lot of more sense. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm trying to talk a little fancy there. A lot of more sense. A lot more sense. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Hebrews. Hallelujah. My pastor told this joke the other day, and I love it. Hallelujah. You know he likes coffee because he brews. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm in a good mood today, y'all. The devil's tried everything to mess with me, but glory to God, the devil's been defeated, and we got victory in Jesus. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Well, victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind Victory today is mine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Joy is mine. Turn with me to Hebrews 12. Well, joy is mine. Joy today is mine. Wait, I know you can't see it, but this little uh, pulpit right here is rocking with me while I'm singing. <laughs> the thing ain't tightened up totally. <laughs> joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Joy today is mine. Last verse for me today. Faith is mine. Faith is mine. Faith today is mine. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I told Satan, get thee behind. Faith today is mine, and I pray everybody leave here singing. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Holy Ghost. Turn with me now to Hebrews 12, verse 3. Actually, uh, verse 2. Looking, actually, 1 through 2. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I am excited about this word. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Somebody's faith is going to get stirred up today, and God's going to give you the grace to walk out the Word of God today like never before because God's grace is sufficient for you and whatever you're going through today. I don't know how long this message is going to be. I just know that when I was praying today, I said, Lord, when do you want me to preach this message? Because on the way to the store today, the, the Holy Ghost spoke and said, I want you to preach on the finished faith. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I said, what is the finished faith? And the Lord told me to go to Hebrews chapter 12, 1 through 2. And we're going to deal with this right now. Therefore, since we are surrounded, hallelujah, by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every heavy weight and that sin that so easily besets us. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, I love you, Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. What does it mean, the finisher of our faith? It means just that. Anything you need was finished the moment Jesus breathed his last on the earth. And then he went to hell and redeemed the promise of God. Those who were trapped waiting on the Messiah to get there, he showed up in full glory. All of hell had to sit down. And for three days and three nights, 
Hell had to listen to the promise of God as the Holy Ghost power hit the Lord and the whole, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. All of hell got to rock it because par- all of heaven got to rock it because paradise was getting preached to by the Holy Ghost. God was there, and he was there to rescue his own. And hell knew that after three days and three nights, it would be dark because the glory was going to be gone. And no longer could anybody look over the veil because, help me, Holy Ghost, no longer could anybody look over the gulf because after God was gone from that gulf, after three days and three nights, the glory of God, paradise would be removed from the pit. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord. And they would actually go on to be with the Lord. And we know in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians, it says that Paul was caught up into the third heaven and saw paradise there. So we now no longer, now we know that no longer is paradise under the earth, but paradise is where God is. Because Jesus said, this day I promise you, you will be with me in paradise. Dice, hallelujah, Holy Ghost, I love you, Jesus. And the Bible said in Hebrews, I believe it is, those who were held captive by the enemy, those who were held captive, he took with them. First Peter or Second Peter, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Those who were held captive, he led captivity captive. And he presented them blameless before the Father because he died for them. And they died in faith, believing that the Messiah would come. And because he came and they died in faith. God said, I'm going to reward you with eternal life through my son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. And the Bible said in Acts, it says, I believe Acts 2, it says, there is no other name given unto man that man might be saved. No other name given on the earth except, it says, no other name given that a man might be saved. On earth or in heaven, friend. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But by the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Bless the Holy Ghost. I bless you, Lord. What about these people who died and said they've heard, they've seen this place, but they come by to tell about their loved ones, but they have never seen Jesus. And I heard this one smart mouth who says he died and went there, and he came back after 30 minutes in heaven. And his name was Daniel Brinkley. 28 minutes. Dead 28 minutes. Said he saw an angel or a spirit being. He wouldn't refer to him as an angel. Said he saw the crystal city. Well, two things. One, you can pick all this up in the book of Revelation. But now here's the problem with his story. He said now he was a non-believer in Jesus. He even admits after 30 years of being dead, three times that he has never accepted Jesus, but he continues to go back to that place. There is a true light and a false light. The Bible says that the devil can imitate the light. It said that, he said, if the devil was once an angel of light, don't be surprised that his servants run around masquerading as angels of light because the devil can manipulate an image of eternity. Because he was there. All he can do is copycat it. Because there has been no mention when they come back of hell. There is no fear of God in their life. They don't talk about Jesus. They talk about this place that they're going and they ain't even Christians. And when they die, they're going back. That's blasphemy. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. No man comes to the Father except through him. And nobody can bless the Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Nobody can come to Jesus unless the Spirit draws them. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. And let me tell you, I don't care how many times you've fallen, it's not too late right now to come back to Jesus. If you still feel the tug of God in your life, if your spirit's not been seared with a hot iron, honey, you can still make Kevin your home. If you're backslidden, you're listening today, I command you in Jesus' name, quit doing what you're doing. Come back to the altar of grace. Come back to Jesus. Repent of your sins that you might make heaven your home in Jesus' name. I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. But it said, looking under Jesus, the altar, and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. When I was in heaven, and when I've heard other people who've died and gone to heaven, when they've visited 
The Lord himself appeared to them. The Lord has appeared to me. The Lord has appeared to others who have died and gone to heaven. But I'm going to explain something. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to explain something to you. If they die and they come back with no change in their life, even their heart's a little bit nicer to people, that they've not accepted Jesus. Honey, when they die, it ain't going to be a beautiful thing. They're going straight to hell if they don't repent and follow Jesus. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Yes, God is pure love. And he is light. But the enemy can imitate some things in the supernatural. But he said you will know their mind by the way they walk in love. So I love you enough to tell you the truth. If you have died in your if you died today in your sins, where would you spend eternity? Are you saying that I'm per are you saying you're perfect, Brother Henry? Absolutely not. I've still got horns for halos sometimes. I still mess up. I still lose it sometimes. But let me tell you, I thank you, Holy Ghost. God's given me power over all the works of the devil. I know I'm not perfect, but I'm perfect through the finished work of Jesus as if I've never sinned because of the blood. I am blood-bought, spirit-filled on my way to heaven. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. But these foolish people who sin purposely and try to get away with it, and they don't, they don't repent. They say, ah, oh, well, God will forgive me. And they don't repent. Them are the ones that Hebrews 6, 6 was talking about. That there's no way back for them. Because they won't repent. Help me, Holy Ghost. You can repent of your sins. Quit trampling the blood. Get under the altar. Stay under the altar. Stay under that blood. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. There is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's veins. The sinner is plunged beneath the flood. Lose all their guilty stains. Some people ain't grounded enough in God. I've heard people say you ain't grounded enough in God. For those who keep getting it wrong purposely, you ain't grounded enough in God. You ain't drowning under the blood. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. Everybody listening, Lord, that you drown them under the blood tonight. That you drown them under the glory. In the name of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let God arise. And his enemies be scattered. For Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I just lost all my notes. They went to the floor. Hallelujah. Oh, they didn't? Hallelujah. I put them over here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. God only gave me a few minutes to prepare for this message. But I want you to hear the word of God by the Holy Ghost. That faith, the Bible said it's impossible. To please God, Hebrews 11, it's impossible, impossible, impossible to please God without faith. How does faith come? Romans 12 and 3, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you would get the garbage out of your ears, all the negative talk around you out of your ears, then, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. It ain't what goes into the body that defiles the spirit and the soul, but what coming there out? Garbage in your ears, garbage out your mouth. But God said, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. If you're being guided by your own emotions, then you've not been plunged far enough under the blood. A dead man can't feel nothing. Romans 6, we are dead to sin. Lord, help us all be dead. I'm not trying to beat nobody up. I'm trying to encourage you to die a little more. Die to yourself. Get under the blood. Get spirit filled. Fire baptized. Blood bought. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. I'm preaching good today. I can't help myself. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let faith. Let faith arise today. John 20. Sorry, John 19. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Verse 36. No, not verse 36. Oh, here it is. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Verse 30. When Jesus 
had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his human spirit, the spirit. He didn't give up the Holy Ghost. He gave up his earthly ghost, his spirit, his uh, human DNA, as well as his godly DNA. His godly DNA is what resurrected him on that third day and third night. But, oh, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. His human spirit said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It is finished. When he said that, his human body died. But his spirit, the spirit of God in him, the Holy Ghost, was very much alive and in power when he busted through the doors of hell and said, I'm taking back the keys from hell, death and the grave, and I'm taking back the authority that Adam gave away. The first Adam failed, but the last Adam got it right. He said, I'm going to take back what you stole from the house of Israel. I'm going to take back the children of God, and I'm taking them back by force. The kingdom of heaven suffered violent, and the violent taken by force. We learn from the master. He was violent with the enemy, and so we're violent too. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. People say, I'm too mean. I shout too much. Let me tell you, honey, if you was mean for the devil, you're going to be even harder of a person for God. You're going to be even more rageous of a person. I'm at rage with the devil because I've been saved, sanctified, blood bought, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire baptized. I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy any longer. Consider it all joy when you go through diverse temptations and trials. Help me, Holy Ghost. I didn't mean to get to preaching good like this. Hallelujah. He said it is finished. When Jesus said it is finished. He had all the hell on the run, honey. Your miracle got bought the day he said, it is finished. The day he said, it is finished. Your faith that day was finished right there, honey. You didn't ever have to worry about not having faith. If your blood ball spirit filled on your way to heaven, fire baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, I've got a word for you right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Romans 12 and 3 that God has given a measure of faith to every man. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Romans 12 and 3. Turn there with me. I know, I know I've got a word in my spirit by the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to still preach on Wednesday, so don't quit now. Don't quit on me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. I just hope faith is rising up in somebody, and I pray that the grace of God that is sufficient for all followers of God would rise up in you. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Bless the Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. I hope that this kind of preaching is all right with you today. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Twelve. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Verse three. <clears throat> Four. For by grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, to not think of yourself more highly than they ought to think, but to think with sober judgment. The Bible says in 1 Peter 7 and 8, 1 Peter 7 and 8, Be ye sober-minded, for your enemy the devil is as a roaring lion. That's verse 9, sorry. Verse, uh, uh, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Verse 8, be sober-minded, for your enemy the devil is as a roaring lion seeking anyone he can devour. The devil's trying to get your mind off your miracle and get it on your situation. But the moment you look to the one who's the author and the finisher of your faith, faith will rise up and take its stand against the enemy. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost, I love you, Jesus. I hope I'm preaching to somebody today. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. That's so good, Lord, because God's so good. This is a wonderful message of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I just found another scripture after that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I hope you don't mind reading with me just a little while. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, 
you not to think any highly of yourself than they ought to, with sober judgment, be of sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned, for as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. Actually, it don't just mean different callings. It also means, oh, Holy Ghost, it means measures of faith. Not everybody has the same kind of faith you do. My faith is reckless. That's what my faith is. My faith is ruthless and reckless. I'm ruthless when it comes to the things of this world. I tear them up in a heartbeat by the Holy Ghost. But a lot of other carnal Christians would say, well, it's all right, Brother Henry. We're just human. Go ahead. Let, let's just say some foul words. We're just human. You know, the Bible says, let no foul word proceed out of your mouth. Help me, Holy Ghost. We all need help sometimes. But I'm just here to help somebody that wants help today, who wants to walk by the things of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, jump over here. I thought I was done. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I just heard the Lord say I wasn't done. Where, where else, Lord? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Each according to the measure of his way we are assigned. For as we are in one body, we have many members. And not all members have the same function. So we are many in one body in Christ. And individually, we are members one of another. Thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Jesus. So what am I saying? You all matter to God, no matter if you've got little faith or great faith. The Bible said that Jesus said to the Seraphonician woman, great is your faith. He told the soldier, great is your faith. But he told Peter, O oh, ye of little faith. He'll address the measure of faith if you let him. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost, I love you, Jesus. They asked Jesus, why couldn't they cast the devil out? And he said, because of your unbelief. I know a lot of Pentecostals, I'm afraid to admit it, that couldn't cast the devil out and wouldn't even know one if one hit them in the head with a rock. Because they got a form of godliness, but they're not the power thereof. Bless the Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. Are you listening to me? They ain't got no faith to cast them out. That's why devils don't come around them. I keep turning around lately, and demons keep manifesting. It ain't because of me. It's because of God in me. And the devil's afraid of God, not me. Thank God that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I've been given power over all the works of the devil. Bless the power of the Holy Ghost, I love you, Jesus. Shokorobondoshe. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What am I doing? I'm trying to preach to you that your faith comes alive. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 14. There you go. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Of Romans, verse 1. Welcome those who are weak in the faith, but not of the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Meaning, don't point it out to them continually that they're weak in faith. Let them show you they're weak in the faith, you address it, and leave it alone. Begin to operate in your faith, and your level of faith, and your level of thinking, and the faith of God that's in you will come alive in them, for iron sharpened at iron, and we're to lay our burden, burdens on each other as if they were our own. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. I just saw a vision of an angel touching this camcorder, so somebody's getting your faith. Somebody at 23 minutes and 49 seconds just got your miracle because the angel sent the glory through the camcorder. Bless your Holy Ghost for the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. My back scratcher just fell to the floor. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. And it's the shape of a hand. So, ha, 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 I just got a hand out. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Ooh, I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God, for the Word of God coming alive today. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Romans ten seventeen, faith that cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. The same faith that you hear that heals you is the same faith that takes to save you. The Bible says, by grace you are saved through faith. Grace is something we don't deserve. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. The righteous, 
will receive the riches of God because of the glory of God upon Christ Jesus. If you glory in the work of the finished work of the cross, you've already got your miracle before you ask for it. Because Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. <laughs> Jesus made it white, washed it white as snow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. I'm not done yet. I'm almost done, but not done yet. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. The church said amen. Like I said, I didn't know how long this was going to be. It's a few scriptures that God, as few scriptures as God gave me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, what kind of a long message is this going to turn out to be? <laughs> I, I thought, well, Lord, this is going to be the shortest message I've given in a long time. But right now, the Lord just hit 25 minutes on the camcorder. It ain't about the length of the time. It's about the power of the word behind it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Matthew 5, if you will, turn with me there. I'm almost done. I got two more scriptures. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Mark. Mark. Matthew, Mark. I'm in Matthew. I was looking for Mark. <clears throat> I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Mark. Five, verse 34. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mark 5, 34. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that this is blessing somebody today. I didn't even know that I was going to preach it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. And the Lord told me, he said, I'm giving this to you because I'm teaching you to be ready in season and out of season to give a word. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. For the Word of God is quick, sharper than any two-edged sword. More quick, more powerful. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Rightfully dividing the Word of Truth, separating bone and marrow. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. God's cutting away some things that would make you doubt. The doubt is going out today. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Mark 5, 34. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For she said, actually go to verse 27 and then through 34. She heard about Jesus. And came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I touched his clothes, I will be made well. There was anointing and healing in the tassels of God's glory. That's what it means. that He will rise with healing. The Son of God would rise with healing in his wings. These wings were talking about the tallit, the glory garment. And he, she touched the tallit. And the power and the virtue of God went out. The little knots on the tallit represent the promises of God. And the power and the promises of God touched her body. The super touched the natural. And she became supernaturally healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. But see, she had to press through the crowd to get a miracle. Some people are not willing to go up to the, even as far as the street ahead of you to get your miracle. Some people are not even willing to drive four-hour drive to get your miracle. But honey, today, because of God's love for you, he sent me to put you. He, he sent me to do this video just for you that your faith may be encouraged and your faith may be strengthened and that your body might be healed. God has sent me to give you the... He has sent me to use me to do... to preach the Word of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. He does the miracle, but faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So how can you receive the Word unless you hear the Word? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. The Bible says, how will they hear unless someone is sent? 
God has sent me here today to give you the word that you may be healed from your sickness. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. There was a lady the other day at Sam's, and I, I, I was walking, and they told me already that if I'm caught praying for anybody at Sam's Club, they're going to lock me up. I thank God. I thank God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If God gets me arrested, he'll bail me out. Just like he did the prophets in the book of Acts. I don't mind getting arrested for God. I love it. I want to go to jail for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Anyways... I, I saw this lady in a wheelchair, and her, and her leg was broke. Bless the Holy Ghost, I love you, Jesus. I said, Lord, if you want me to pray for her, let her come to me. And I stood, and I turned my back, because I didn't know what was going to happen. I, I, would, I took a step of faith. I said, Lord, I'll pray for her here, even though the threat's there, that I'll go to jail for your glory. I said, Lord, if, she's, if it's your will that she be healed, let her come to me, and I turned back, and I saw an image in my, in my spirit vision. I saw behind me, though I was facing away from her, I saw as if I was looking right at her in the Holy Ghost. I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I saw an angel of the Lord standing by that wheelchair, and I looked over again, and the woman was right beside me, and I said, thank you, Holy Ghost. She's going to get healed. I said, woman, had you hurt yourself? She told me. And I said, well, I'm going to pray for you, and if you don't mind. She said, you can pray for me, but I don't believe, preacher, that God will heal me. I said, then stay sick, and I walked out. Because let me tell you something. Faith comes by here and here by the word of God. But the Bible said that Jesus could do no mighty miracle in the town that he was in because they had no faith. Without faith, you can't get what you need from God. Without faith, you shouldn't even ask because you ain't going to receive it. Thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Jesus. What if some don't believe, the book of Romans says. Romans 3, I believe it says, what if some don't believe? He said, should that make the word of God of none effect? God forbid it. God bought your miracle the day he died for you. So why are you watching all these foolish TV preachers that says you can buy your miracle? Blasphemy. God gave you your miracle right. The day he shed his blood, he said it is finished. It was signed, sealed, and delivered. For he broke the back of his, his, his body was broken. His blood was shed. And that day he broke the back of sin. He broke the sickness off of you. He paid for it. So why are you still holding on to what don't belong to you? You're illegally supernaturally holding on to something that's not yours. God died and rose again through Jesus Christ to give you your miracle. Stop holding on and resisting to the Holy Ghost. Submit to God. Resist that devil. Not God, but resist the devil. Quit resisting God. You're resisting the wrong one. He died to give you everything. The devil wants to kill you. God died so you wouldn't have to. The devil wishes you would die so he wouldn't have to hear you no more. I tell you, when I die and go home to heaven, I guarantee you there's going to be the biggest celebration in hell you ever heard because another minister's out of the way. But thank you, Holy Ghost, until God calls me home to glory, I'm going to be a thorn in the devil's flesh. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I'm just about there. Oh, glory to God, I love you, Holy Ghost. I'm doing a Holy Ghost jig right now. Hold for the... Over the camera, I know you can't see it, but I felt that. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. That's why the devil hates me, because I'm a child of the Lamb, because I'm blood-bought, spirit-filled, and fire-baptized. He hates those who love God. So when you're going through something, rejoice, honey, because it ain't nothing personal. It's just warfare. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. He didn't say it. He said that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It didn't say you wouldn't get hit. It just said it would not finish its calling. It wouldn't finish its, its attack. The attack would not finish you off. For your faith was finished by the word of God. The day the word lived in us. 
The Bible said the day the Word of God that Jesus said it is finished. Everything was established. He said, do not be deceived. I've not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. The law of sin and death, he finished off. But he also that day finished you for your faith. You can walk in complete faith. You can walk in your miracle no matter the level of faith you've got. Small or great, rich or poor, we all have got the same God who is saved under the blood. If you are saved under the blood, confess your sins, that Jesus is your Messiah, your Lord and Savior, then you are blood-bought and you have the right to ask anything if you even have a little faith. I ran into a lady today, though, unlike the lady at Sam's, I ran into a lady at Ingalls today, and Brother Ingalls and Brother Sam's both were filled with the Holy Ghost, men of God, fire baptized. Hallelujah, I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. What happened to the lady at Ingalls? She looked at me and said, I've not seen you since you were a kid. She said, I prayed for you that God would make you who you wanted to be. And she said, I remember you said you was going to be a preacher. What are you doing now? I said, I'm in full-time ministry, baby. I said, I'm in full-time ministry preaching the Word of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And she said, well, will you lay hands on me and pray for me right here in front of all the managers? Pray for me that God would heal me of my infirmity. We laid hands on her, and the devil came out of pain, and God healed her in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. I'm looking for somebody to put my faith with. I don't care how dumb the world thinks you look, because the Bible said the, that the cross is foolishness to them that are perishing. If you don't like me, I'm sorry. I love me because God loves me, and I love you enough to tell you the truth that God loves you, but you must come to him because he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you have no faith to seek him, that means you're not truly. People say, well, I ain't got no faith there, Pastor Henry, Brother H.R., I ain't got no faith. Let me ask you, have you been saved before, truly saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, sanctified and fire baptized, blood bought? Then you've got faith. Because Jesus said to this woman, thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Where was I at? Oh, Lord. Mark. Matthew and Mark. Hallelujah. Holy God. Five scriptures. Wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And God just did this awesome sermon. And I still got to preach Sunday, so pray, or Wednesday, so pray for my voice, please. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Bless this bed I lay upon. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. 37. Mark 35, verse 37. Mark 5, verse 37. Oh, wait a minute. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. And his disciples said to him, and he turned about, verse 30, and said, Who touched me? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How could you ask, Who touched you? Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, <clears throat> came in fear and trembling fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Everyone else had always seemed like he was saying, Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. But there was two people, one with the lady with the hunchback in the church, and Jesus said, Daughter, be healed. For you're a daughter of Abraham, be healed. But this one he called daughter also. 
Everybody else he called woman or uh, son, but this one he called daughter. Why? Because this woman needed an identity because no man had ever touched her. In all her years of bleeding, no man had ever touched her. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. What does it mean? It means that if you're willing to go out of your way to get a hold of God, He's willing to do everything to bless you. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. He paid it all, honey. He died for your salvation, your healing, your deliverance, your peace of mind. He died to give you everything in this life. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Why? Because no greater love than a man have this than he laid down his life for his friends. Friends, your faith was finished at the cross. Anything you ever needed was found under the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Then right after she got healed, a man... Who was a, a, a man who was a man in the temple came up to him and said, uh, Master, my daughter is dying. And he said, Take me to him. And on the way, the Bible said that another man came and ran and said, Your daughter is dead. Don't trouble him. Don't trouble Jesus. We think so many times that we can't come to God because it would be too much trouble. But if he died to give it to you, honey, he wants to give it to you because no good thing. Will he withhold from him them who love the Lord? No good thing will he withhold from those who love him. He died to give it to you. What are you dying for not to accept it? Bless the power of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I bless you, Lord. See, I didn't even know God was going to do this amazing message today. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Now, verse 36, but overhearing what they had said, Jesus said to the leader, chapter 5 of Mark, verse 36, he said, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house, the leader of the synagogue was weeping and wailing loudly. When he heard, he entered and said, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in the child was where the child was and he took her by the hand and said to her, Tala, Tala, Thaya, come. Which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. And they were overwhelmed with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Actually, she went in. She never died. Jesus even said it. She was not dead. What was it? It was a coma brought on by lack of food. There was something in her diet that was lacking, and when Jesus resurrected her from that place of nearly dead, from that comatose state, because of a lack of nourishment, he healed her from that, and we never find out where, we never read where he had to heal her again. Because when God does it, honey, it's permanent. When the devil tries to bring an attack back, you say, devil, get behind me. It's done because Jesus said it was done. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. I ain't got to worry about you, devil. I've been healed by the blood of Jesus. Put that finger back in the devil's face and that thing he's pointing at you saying, you'll never do this, you'll never do that, and say it's already done by the work of Christ. I have finished faith, devil, and I'm finished with you. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. So the same faith that it takes to heal you is the same faith it takes to save you 
Ephesians 2, 8, by grace you are saved through faith. Let's read that really quick and I'm done. Final scripture, friends. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. So whatever your miracle looks like, if it looks dead, if it looks exhausted, if it looks anything, you've been given life and power to speak life to a dead situation or to a comatose situation because you hadn't nourished your dream. Help me, Holy Ghost, out of preach. And you have the power by the Holy Ghost to speak life to a dead situation and command it to come back. You have the right to speak to your miracle. You have the right given to you by the blood of Jesus because it was finished by the faith. It was the finished work of the cross, and by faith you can receive anything. The word saved means sozo, completely lacking nothing. Everything you need is finished at the cross of Calvary. Like I said, I don't know why the Lord prompted my heart today to put this message on YouTube and on Facebook, but I mean, I really felt convicted today, and it's like... The enemy did not want this message out there, but I'm not going to glory in the fact that I went through something. I'm glorying in the fact that God's bringing you through something, that he's bringing you to a place of repentance, that he's bringing you to a place of deliverance, as we're reading here today. And I pray the Holy Ghost will give me my voice back so I can finish preaching, especially Wednesday, because the Holy Ghost gave me an awesome word Wednesday called the bread of life. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. That one's a simple title, but it's a deep message, friends. And I know that I'm to preach the bread of life Wednesday. So if you have never heard a message of the identity of Jesus, it's found in his own name. And I'm going to show you in the scriptures in the Old Testament and in the New how the bread of life is Jesus, our Messiah, and how he wants you to come and dine with him. A lot of my sermons lately has been about feasting on faith. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Are you hungry, friends? <laughs> Bless your Holy Spirit. I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. What did I say? Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Through faith. And this not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. Remember, God giveth every man a measure of faith. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. It didn't say he was going to give you all the faith in the world. You don't need all the faith in the world. Jesus said, all you need is the faith of a mustard seed and you can move a mountain. So what is the faith of God? What is this faith that he gave you? He's given you just enough faith. He's given you enough faith that you need. But then when you get that faith, you need to let your faith grow by continuing to read the Word of God, believe in the Word of God, hearing the miracle testimonies of the Holy Ghost, and believe in what God has done. Then you will see what you're praying for. You will see your faith grow. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of your own, but by the grace, it's a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no man can boast. But see, faith without works is dead. You need the faith of God to do the work of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. If you ain't got no faith, nothing will appear in your life. But if you've got faith, even, in, even if it's just a little bit, something good's going to happen even in the midst of your chaos. Romans 8, 28 is only for the believers, though. It said, for all good things working together, all things working together for good. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. They all work together for the good, but them that love God and are called according to his purpose and glory through Christ Jesus. I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. What does it mean? It means no matter what you're going through, there's been even just a little bit of a measure of faith. He said he will not pour on you what you put on you what you cannot bear. That's why we need to cast off every heavy weight. And that sin is so but that easily beset us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. For by grace have you been saved through faith, not of your own, but it's the gift of God not the result of works, so that no man can boast. For we are what he was. For we are, for we are what he has made us. 
created in Christ Jesus for good works. There it is, works, friends, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. The Bible said that, I thank you, Holy Ghost, after they got saved and filled the Holy Ghost, Mark, ah, uh, this is it, right here, the last scripture, Matthew, Mark, Mark, friends, and this is it. I'm, I'm ending it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God gave me this word for somebody who needs a miracle. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 16, 18. The one who is believed and baptized, that's what the Holy Ghost will be saved. But the one who does not believe will be condemned or be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. They, and these signs shall follow, verse 17, them who believe, those who believe, by using my name, they will cast out devils, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes out of their hands, and if they will drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. Now, a lot of these idiots in the mountains have got this idea, oh, I can handle these snakes. Well, friend, God ain't a snake doc. He ain't trying to smell you no snake oil. He ain't trying to, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. He ain't trying to cheat you, friend. You can pick up a deli saying it won't hurt you, but, friend, he don't suggest you go do it. He said if they pick up. He, he said they will pick up a deli saying it won't hurt them. The Bible said Paul was bitten by a snake, but he didn't go in to the fire and look for him to be picked up. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. The Bible said he was gathering wood, and the fire got so hot that the demon came out. The snake came out and bit him. But what was it? It was really a devil, an attack against his life. But when the faith of God rose up in Paul, he said, I'm not going to die, for I remember the word of God, because the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of truth, will remind you of all things that Jesus has said. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. And these signs will accompany them that believe. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will drink any deadly thing and it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And it says that they went everywhere... So in the so then the Lord Jesus said this after he spoke these things. What I meant earlier about God not being a snake doctor, God is not some kind of a humorist who's sitting up there saying, Oh, I'm gonna heal you, and then never do it. God's miracles are real, friends. When he heals you, it's over with. The devil's defeated, you got your healing. Don't doubt it. If it tries to come against you, the sickness, reminded of Nahum 1-9 that the sickness will not return again in Jesus' name and tell that devil to go back to hell where it belongs. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I bless you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Holy Ghost. And these signs will come upon them that believe, will accompany them that believe. They will, he said they'll speak in new tongues, they'll cast out devils. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and if it, they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Luke 10, 19. He's given us power over all the works of the devil. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Love you, Lord. So then all this, so then the Lord Jesus, bless the Holy Ghost. Love you, Lord. After he had spoken then, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere while the Lord worked with them and through them confirming the message with signs following. But bless the Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. The Lord working through them. Faith without works is dead. If you believe God will do it, then he'll do it, honey. That's the, that's the nutshell of this message. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Spirit of God, I love you, Holy Ghost. So, Father, in Jesus' name, by faith first, Father God, by grace through faith, right now we ask anybody who's lost or backslid would come to the foot of the cross and would repent of their sins and come back home 
to Jesus. Repent of your sins, friend. Ask Jesus to forgive you your sins. Tell him you believe he died on the cross that God raised him from the dead. And you shall be saved. Father God, I thank you, Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus. Pray this prayer with me, friend. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you to come in my heart. I believe you died on the cross that God raised you from the dead. Wash me, cleanse me, fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. That I might make heaven my home in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirit of God, I bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that soul that came in the kingdom. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Bless the Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Now, Father God, anybody bound up by sickness and disease, I break and bind the spirit of sickness. I cast it off, Lord God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Lord God, we curse that devil of bondage of sickness in Jesus' name. We command creative miracles right now from the throne room of heaven. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, I bless you, Lord. I hey, Lord, right now, Holy Ghost. Heal them, Holy Ghost, right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. I command creative miracles right now. I command every sickness and disease to leave you now. Every imbalance be made balanced. Every sickness be delivered from them now and go back to the pit of hell and never return again. In Jesus' name, be bound to your day of judgment, you spirit of sickness. For they have received the finished work of Calvary. Sozo, they're saved, completely lacking nothing. Spirit of God, I bless you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, they are healed, and they'll be healed, for he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Spirit of God, I bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord. Now, everybody bound by addiction. I break every spirit of addiction. I bind it by the blood of Jesus. We cast it off, and we command it to go back and not return. We command there to be no backlash, no refunds of the enemy. Don't let the devil try to bring up their past anymore, for that receipt's been destroyed by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They're not who they are, was anymore, because they're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. The old them has passed away. Behold, the new has come up, and they will live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father God, you said that out of their bellies would flow rivers of living water. Spirit of God, I bless you, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Jesus. Father God, let the Holy Ghost and fire come upon me. I curse every devil binding your mind that says you can't receive the word of God today. I bind you, you devil. This is for them. It is for today. And I bind every spirit of religion and cast it out. In Jesus' name. Fire, fire, fire. Let them flow out. Speak in other tongues, Holy Ghost, through them, Father God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, fill them with the Holy Ghost and fire, speaking in other tongues. Out of, out, of, out of their bellies will flow rivers of living water. In Jesus' name, I bless you, Holy Ghost. No fear, for perfect love casts out all fear. Hallelujah. I said that about that spirit of religion. Somebody was watching it, going to be watching it. And, and you've got a spirit of religion. You don't believe it's for today. You're a Baptist, friend. God tells me to tell you it is for today. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Somebody, somebody, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I don't care if you're a Baptist, Methodist, whatever. It's for today. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. My great-great-grandpappy would pray in the Holy Ghost. And they said that he was the, they called him the village idiot. Hallelujah. They called him the village nut because he would go around praying in the Holy Ghost. He'd pray till the body, to his spirit, that the shaft would be removed from his body. And they said that when he cried, you could hear him about the equivalent of about 12 miles. And I'm not kidding you. In the mountains of, of Cleveland, Georgia, you can hear way into their mountains when somebody's shouting and praying. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. And my great-great-grandpapa, the preacher, said, when everybody was making fun of him, he said, I'd rather be in his shoes on the day of judgment than in yours because you're touching the anointing of God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I bless you, Lord. And if you want to shout for God, if you want to preach for God and you're a woman, the Bible says that he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. It's for everybody. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. He gave another spirit by measure, and he had no problem having a woman. Praise the Holy Ghost, I love you, Jesus. Carrying his living word, then he has no problem with a woman carrying 
He, if he has no problem with a woman carrying his living word, he has no problem with a woman carrying his written word. Age means nothing when God is timeless and the timeless God is living in you. Go out and do what you're called to do by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the word of God that came forth today. In Jesus' name, I love you. I bless you. Write to me. Let me know what God did for you. In Jesus' name, thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Where it's always the hour for revival. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air. Amen. God bless. I love you. Bye-bye.